Good morning, and welcome to worship. And I just have to say thank you. That was gorgeous, Julie. I don't know if you could tell she was playing a duet with herself. It's amazing. Child of God, you are welcome here. Trinity Lutheran North Omaha welcomes all into the full life of God's love because God has welcomed all. We confess the neglect, abuse, pain, and violence the church has caused by walling off and withholding the love and grace of God, even in this place. We ask for your forgiveness for the ways we have failed to love one another as God loves us. While we will still struggle with bias, power, and fear, we also know that ours is a God of grace whose spirit is constantly calling us into a new way of living that reflects Christ more fully. We pledge our work to this cause of welcome, openness, and love. Our faith demands it, and we joyfully journey towards a more abundant expression of the church that Christ calls us to be. We are reminded in scripture that there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. Because God has welcomed all, Trinity North Omaha offers a heartfelt and Christ-centered welcome to all. Knowing the list can never be long enough or exhaustive enough, and that the Spirit always seeks to draw the circle wider, we speak a word of welcome, especially to those the Church and its members have often left out. This welcome of Christ is yours no matter your age, size, class, color, race, ethnicity, education level, or socioeconomic status, your sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. Whether you are married, singled, single, partnered, widowed, or divorced, whether you have children or not, whether you are of differing abilities, whether you are a lifelong Lutheran or have never heard of the Lutheran Church, whether you are new to the faith or questioning, whether you have a criminal record or have been imprisoned, whether you are employed or unemployed, whether you are a citizen or undocumented, you are welcome here. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. The peace of the Lord is with you always. Also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Our gospel reading for today comes from Mark chapter 1 verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, 
You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Four days ago, the festival of the Epiphany. And traditionally, Epiphany marks the day at the end of the 12 days of Christmas when the three wise men, the Magi, found their way to the Holy Family in Nazareth to worship the newborn child who would be king. Having traversed afar and following yonder star, they had come upon the God of heaven and earth, living, eating, breathing, and crying as a young child. Epiphany is, after all, a, a startling bump into the divine, wherever we may find it. Epiphany is the day when Christ's reach, the reach of a small child, first extends beyond that family in Bethlehem, beyond the lineage of David, beyond Israel and the Jewish faith, ad gentium, to include those outsiders of the faith, like the wise men, the Gentiles, you, and me, all the nations of the world who would also see and hear and follow this Messiah. And today, just four days later, we celebrate another grand epiphany on the feast of epiphany. God is revealed in this little baby, this Christ child, to those far outside of the normal scope of the Jewish faith. Three astrologers from unknown lands laying gifts of gold, myrrh, and frankincense. Today, in the cold waters of the Jordan River, Christ is made known unequivocally as God's own son, God's own beloved son. The dividing line between God and the world is torn apart as Jesus descends into the water and the spirit descends to earth. And God is very pleased. Our brother Martin said it this way. Here you have the son, says God. Not an angel, but the son, and you have me as well. God can offer no higher revelation. That, that is an epiphany. Spoken to by the father, alighted upon by the spirit, Jesus has been shown to the world with his true identity. He is the Son of God. We learn who this Jesus is, that he is God's own beloved Son. Jesus, the carpenter from Nazareth, is the Son of God, and God is very happy. We can hear the pride the joy in the voice of God. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. A short sentiment, but packed with explosive de depth. When we hear the father's joy, we can't help but hear the overtones hummed by Isaiah. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, and whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. We would recall the stirrings of the spirit over the water of the Jordan in the same way the spirit twirled over the face of the darkness at the beginning of all things. We would know from the psalmist that the voice of the Lord is upon the waters the God of glory thunders, the Lord is upon the mighty waters. And then, while we're still reeling from this epiphany, God then leads us by the hand to the water as well and tells us that the water is cold and that no earthly benefit will come from it. Jesus tells us that it will lead to temptation as his own baptism would at the hands of the devil in the wilderness. And that this baptism would even lead to our death. The spirit would remind us that the waters, just as at the beginning, can be dark and dangerous. But Christ whispers, I've been there first. I've made the water holy. I will be with you. 
God has called you by name as well, beloved child of God. Jesus, diving into the waters of baptism, promises us the same name that God has given to him. Christ has given himself to the cold of the water so that we are also given the name, beloved child of God. And how this name changes everything for Christ and for us. The world is a dry, dry place after all in need of the wetness of baptism and in need of hearing that it too is a beloved child of God. The name comes with the joy of an identity that is more than just superficial. This is a name and a spirit that get deep into our bones and cast us out into the world with Jesus sharing that wetness of baptism in the name that God seeks to give to all. The wetness reminds us that the task is wide, but the gifts of God are far wider. The waters of baptism in the name beloved can quench and drench the dryness of this old world. Hearing and believing God's promise that we are God's beloved. What difference then might it matter to our own children, to the children we teach, to every person in our office, to those we have yet to speak a word, whether by unfamiliarity or outright anger, to remind them that they too are beloved children of God and that God is pleased with them. I dare say it might make all the difference in the world. Through Christ's baptism and ours, we are born anew. The church is born anew. And that faithful promise of God calls us to flood the entire earth through our drenched bodies. This promise is whispered and shouted every time a baptism is recalled. Might I even be so bold as to recall that today is the anniversary of my first hearing those words spoken over me in the water 39 years ago. Every time we begin a service in thanksgiving for baptism, every time we get splashed in the tub, the pool, the sink, the ocean, God promises to us the name of beloved child. God whispers the promise to us of who we are and whose we are. You're my son, my daughter. You've been washed in the same waters as Christ, and I love you with a passionate and dangerous love that knows the numbers of hairs on your head. I knit you in the womb. I cried when you cried, and I rejoiced when you rejoiced. You are my beloved child. And amidst all that may come to pass in this old world, I am well pleased with you. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you, be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
At this time, we will speak the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all God has made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely and that your light will shine into all darkness. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer. Today we pray especially for Dee, Josie, LeMay, Denny and Jan, Tom, Elizabeth, Julie, Tom and Bernice, Danny, Dennis, Claire, Diane, Alice, Sheila, Lawrence, Caitlin and Benny, Rosie, Matt, Baby Lewis, Tammy, Zane, David, Michelle, and Teresa, that God shower compassion. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the congregation gathered here, for students and teachers returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now let's speak the words of the Lord's Prayer in whatever version is meaningful to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. I have just a few announcements for today. First of all, Trinity's annual meeting will be held online on Sunday, January 31st at 11 a.m. following worship. This will be a new experience for, I'd say, all of us since we've never done that before. Uh, More information will be coming soon about the procedures for the meeting, so would you please add this date and time to your calendar to be sure 
to help us meet our quorum for the meeting. We need your voices. Then, as you've read in the past few Trinity News editions, our church council is hoping to find one more person willing to join them in helping to continue the great work that our church is doing. If this is a challenge that you're willing to accept, please contact Karna Kadurka as soon as possible. And finally, the Secret Christian Friends Group held a Zoom meeting on January 2nd. Discussion was held regarding how the group could could continue on in the new year, and the following plans were made. For those ladies who took part last year and have a gift that you would like to have passed on to your secret Christian friend, please make sure that gift is here at the church before Saturday, January 16th, unless you would like to mail it on your own. Then those who wish to participate in the group this coming year should come to church on that day, January 16th, and park by the west door, the back one, at 1.30 after the pantry finishes. You park, remain in your car. If there's a package for you from your secret Christian friend, it will be delivered to your car along with a new name and a slip to record your 2021 secret Christian friend for the records. You'll check quickly to make sure that you didn't that you weren't given your own name and fill out the slip and drop it into the receptacle provided. If for any reason you choose not to continue on for this year and have not yet notified Cindy Hilgen or Norman Abbey, please do that right away. Thank you. And now please receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. 